Yo, yo, it's the fairy. Morning, any reasonable person, uh, it's March of 2024. You're not supposed to date your videos because date your videos, I don't care about that stuff. Any reasonable person would be bass fishing right now or fishing in salt water because it's springtime. Um, I know a lot of you tough guy bow hunters just, just bow hunt. <laughs> well, you can only bow hunt so much. You should buy some fishing rods or get a girlfriend. Even if you're married, that way you'd stay busy because this all bow hunting all the time thing is hilarious. So anyway, uh, <laughs> now that I've pissed off half the world, I actually think I caught a redirect of an arrow because the animal's moving. It's one of those things that uh, only dorks like me look at and all the haters out there and stuff and say the ranch fairy just shoots animals at a deer feeder and all that stuff and he's not hunting. Yeah, I am not hunting. Uh, I'm trying to use the pigs on our ranch as test targets in live hunting situations. For those of you who follow me know that. For those of you that hate me, that's the game. So I actually think I caught, here's the clip, the arrow coming in, the animal moves, and the arrow wiggles at impact, passes through because it's an adult arrow, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But this is a problem for all species. And uh, I think it's really cool. And I'm not 100% convinced. How's you, how do you like that? Stay tuned. Looking at footage, and this is one of the advantages of getting to shoot a lot of animals in hunting situations with different aero platforms, and then look at the detail. And for some reason, I slowed this clip down. This shot is like 15 yards, maybe 12. It's tight. And it is with, hang on, I'll get the arrow. No one likes to shoot the really adult stuff. Scares the hell out of grown ass men. <laughs> it is not this arrow, but it is the 300 grain tough head on a 250 spine arrow. And that arrow is total arrow length, which I'm still doing the analysis and in my head it's still run, running around. 32 inches because the broadhead's three inches long, 32 inches from point to the back of the knock. It is a bare shaft knock tuned arrow. And the arrow in and of itself, when you watch these clips, just know that the arrow went through the pig and it ended up in the trees behind the pig. Um, so it skipped like 25 yards, maybe 30 before it hit the earth. So the length of that arrow at, you know, pushing 30, 32 inches long because of the broadhead length and all that stuff is, is relevant here. And I think it contributes, not negatively, I think it allows us to see it because the arrow goes whistling through the pit. It's supposed to because adult arrows go through stuff and it'll stick in four inches and call it a killer. <sighs> Who'd want to do that? The first thing, um, before we get to talking about it, here's the shot in full speed. And you can just see that the arrow just whips through. This pig went about 50 yards back there. They make the brush and they tend to slow down when you pass through them. It's very common for um, feral hogs that we've shot. And you get a complete pass through with a razor sharp, hands dropped, you know, hair popping broadhead that they just want to get in the brush. And it's like they get in the brush and slow down. Even though they're running full speed, they don't keep running full speed. They just get to the brush and then they slow down. So this pig went into the brush, and I think he went like 35 yards back, and he was dead. A really good blood trail. Typical deal, um, just for note, because I'm a dork. Typically, I get blood somewhere between 20 and 30 yards from impact when they're running that fast. So as you watch the clip, just realize they're running like full speed. It takes a little while. Sometimes it comes right out. This is not what that's about. 
The first thing I want you all to see is, um, I've, I've caught this before, but I haven't had it on a video in a long time. All the animals jump. So you're gonna want to throw a clip in here and I'll kind of talk over it, but watch, um, watch all the animals jump the string, not just the one being shot at. It's, <laughs> it's pretty hilarious uh, that they all jump the string it, because you just don't think of it that way. Um, I've seen this multiple times, and I think it happens with deer and everything. We just don't, like the deer hunting videos, the guys you and gals are usually sucking the frame in because it makes for a better video, and that's fine. But uh, it's very, very common for every animal in the herd. I've had as many as eight pigs all jump the string at the same time. So more to come on that. Or not more to come on that. There's nothing to come on that. They all jump the string. Okay. So still <laughs> noodling this. What I believe is occurring is arrows in flight. Here's a, here's a, a couple of still shots of the arrow approaching. And remember the camera's over here, the arrow's flying in at a weird angle. So that always makes, you cannot 100% say that the arrow's not flying a little weird. If you were behind it, you could. And I'm not convinced I didn't torque it a little bit or whatever, but it's 12 yards. Definitely as the arrow hits the pig, the pig is going down and a little forward, and you can see, and here's the still frames, here comes the arrow, here's another, and then all of a sudden you see this wiggle in the lighted knock. There's no explanation for that other than, at least I can't come up with one, other than the pig's moving, the shaft's going this way, the pig's going down and forward a little bit, and as the arrow approaches, remember, it's 31 inches long, so it's a, there's a lot of time where the point of the impact, or the point of the broadhead hits the pig, and it's moving, there's a lot of time for that shaft to go through them, and the second it touches them, remember, the pig's going a completely different direction than the arrow path. So the second it touches meat, it's gonna start wiggling a little bit or wanting to redirect. In this case, um, this is something I just put together literally right now. The good thing here is since they're going forward, it looks like the arrow actually bends, not bends, it redirects forward. It's like they pull it forward. which is really good because forward is where they die. <laughs> but no one's talking about or trying to figure out or look at. I've known this for a long time and I've just never been able to catch it on video. I've talked about it anecdotally and it's one of the concerns I have with, I'm trying to figure out why mechanical broadheads are such inconsistent penetrators. You'd think it's like the platform's pretty much the same. You got, let's say rear deploying, there's a lot of them, mechanical broadheads. Light, arrow, heavy, arrow, doesn't matter. Let's just say you got pretty good arrow flight. You got a rear deploying mechanical broadhead. And then this happens. And the blades could just deploy in any angle possible. So... Let's say the arrow's approaching like this and the pig is going that way. It's the same exact scenario we're in right now, but I'm shooting a two inch wide rear deploying mechanical. And let's say that the pig is not perfectly square. They're, they're rolling away. So you're already hitting a, you're already hitting, the target should be flat and it's already spinning. It's already giving an angle to uh, the target to hit and the blades are not gonna deploy equally. In a perfect world, 
a mechanical broadhead would hit a perfectly square surface square. There's not a square surface on any animal on the earth because all the bones are bent. And then them, the bones in and of themselves are either curved or round. So they're a very difficult target to hit dead center to penetrate. So if you have a mechanical broadhead coming in and the blades try to deploy, if it hits a little off square, one of the blades is gonna deploy earlier than the other. If you just think about how they work. Again, perfect performance for a mechanical broadhead would be a perfectly flat surface that is moderately soft and they would deploy at exactly the same time for maximum effectiveness for the arrow to stay on the shot line. Don't miss that, to stay on the shot line through the animal. In the air doesn't matter. But this arrow, I'll show you it again. Here's the clip again. This arrow's flying, hits the pig, and you see it, you see it shimmy a little bit. and start to wiggle because the pig's moving. And if that were a mechanical broadhead, and it's a deer, it doesn't matter what animal it is, and all of a sudden your flat surface, moderately flat, perfectly perpendicular surface, let's just say it's that, spins a little bit, and one of the blades deploys a tad bit earlier than the other, you have a moving target making the shaft wiggle because the point's going to hit, it's going to be moving because the pig or the animal's moving and then the knock's going to wiggle. There's, there's just, just totally logical. And then you have a very high potential for the blades to deploy inconsistently. One could be moderately open and the other's still back and then it starts to deploy. So deploy, shaft goes like this and the pig's moving and the deer's moving. And then the other one, deploys and tries to kick the tail back while the pig is moving. You're talking about the thing going in four different directions almost in milliseconds. <laughs> and the speed doesn't help you because the reaction of the, the shaft is so long. So if the shaft was this long, you'd probably be better off, I think. I don't know if that would help or hurt. What well, we do know they're 26 to 30 inches long, right? Depending on your draw length and all that stuff. So... <sighs> It just contributes, you know, it just adds another data point to ponder on why mechanicals are so inconsistent, right? If the broadhead, if the if you could make the mechanical broadhead hit vertically every time in this particular scenario, I think that would be the optimal penetration capability for a mechanical broadhead. In the case of a fixed blade broadhead, you don't have any of that extra leverage, I guess I'll call it, um, inconsistency for blade deployment. They're just going to hit and do as well as they possibly can. So it's just, you know, to me, it's interesting. To the rest of the bow hunting world, I don't know if this is interesting at all, but it's just another thing I'm going to research. I'm going to try to start catching this more often because we shoot a lot of them. I'm going on a hunt. I've got three hunts in the next uh, month and a half. And I'll be videoing a bunch and I'm going to try to catch this again and see if it keeps happening. If you like this content, I suggest you go to one of my playlists. Three that I might suggest. The Quartering 2 Shot Series. My study of long range arrow performance, which is a study of energy and speed and everything as the arrow goes down range. And then also look at my high FOC arrow building playlist. But anyway... Well, that's, that's another Dorco video, stupid ranch fairy who doesn't do anything interesting because, you know, it's just all bow tuning and you just shoot them in the big part and it'll all work, uh, except for the millions of shots on YouTube when we have super inconsistent arrow performance on meat. And my goal is to make you lethal in all situations. So I want you to have the highest performance aero platform, razor sharp, hands dropped broadheads, et cetera, so that when this kind of weird stuff happens, and it's gonna happen, 
you still blow right through them. Because I don't think anybody wants to be less lethal. I just, I, I, I think people who shoot light aero platforms that have kind of flimsy broadheads and all that stuff, and they're just sold on this shot placement thing, I believe they, they want to be 100% lethal as well. But you're just not really setting yourself up for, for success when everything has to go perfect. That's a very challenging, you know, situation to every thing's got to go perfect. If you prefer the animal to stand pretty still, only hit them in the ribs and there's a lot of other bones. You don't pull the shot. You don't misjudge the range. The wind doesn't blow. You're not nervous or excited, like a little bit of buck fever, maybe shaking a little bit and you're not as accurate as possible. And that requires you to pull off a perfect shot, hit a ideal spot, and then have your broadhead penetrate and have the blade survive impact and still cut their way into the thorax and be lethal after impact. I have a couple of videos coming up on that, um, how broadhead sharpening and the actual broadhead edge quality. Going back to Dr. Ed's structural integrity, um, one of the things we got to start thinking about is, are the edges of the broadheads you're shooting going to be structurally sound after they penetrate meat, hair, and rib cage, are they razor sharp? And do they have a high potential for that to be razor sharp going through the thorax? If they erode a bunch, you're going to have long days. More to come on that. Hey, subscribe if you want to. If you don't, it's free country. George Washington right there with the liberal tears cup. Gotta love that. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching. Oh, hit the dinger bell thing. And if your friends don't like me, send them this. Um, you know, there isn't a single person on YouTube who's using their access to game animals that can be shot year round in the dark at night with bombs and freaking guns and helicopters doing what I do. Not one, the number zero, but I'll keep doing it. See ya.